and welcome to Australia in Space TV. My name is Chris Cubbage. I'm the editor with My Security Media. Today we're joined by Professor Andy Coronius, PhD, who is the CEO and Managing Director with SmartSat CRC in Adelaide. Andy, thanks for joining us. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you and the audience. Wonderful. I should say thanks for joining us again. We've had you on a number of times, uh, so it's always a pleasure to, to cross to you. Uh, you're also a sponsor with the Indo-Pacific uh, Indo Space and Earth Conference in Perth uh, on 23rd to 24th of October. So it's great to recognise that and, and thank you. Um, this is on we the are, back of... Sorry, go. We are, we are delighted to be sponsoring. Uh, it's a great conference. It's a, it's a conference that will enable us to articulate more clearly the value of space to society and to, uh, and, and to the community. I think... Uh, uh, the organisers should be congratulated on that, and we are delighted to be sponsoring it. Wonderful, thank you so much. And it is there's a lot of work going on in the background, as I'm sure you're aware. No doubt. Uh, and and uh, but yeah, it's uh, looking really good lineup, and we will talk uh, offline about that session that you'll be running uh, as well. Now, again, this particular interview is to recognise the ACT Space Update 2023. SmartSat CRC uh, has announced uh, an investment of $7 million uh, into this with some new university appointments and R&D projects. Let's walk through some of those. $7 million, it's great to see that investment being made uh, into space. Uh, and there's some appointments with the Australian National University there, I, I see as well. Um, yeah, just talk us through, Andy. What, what's the background? Absolutely, uh, this, absolutely, absolutely. We were... Uh, first of all, we were delighted to be hosted uh, by Professor Anna Moore and the rest of the in-space team at the ANU. Uh, amazing facilities in, the, in Canberra City. Uh, and we were joined, of course, by government and particularly the Chief Minister, Andrew Barr, who launched the, uh, uh, the Space Update 2023 for the ACT. And SmartSat is delighted to be part of... Uh, of that uh, effort by the ACT as, as part of our uh, state node program that we have with a number of states. And we've made that, um, that investment. We are very committed, of course, uh, as, uh, as an organization to play a major role in lifting you know, the capability, the space capability of Australia. Uh, and, and that is why we're making those, uh, those investments. Wonderful. And uh, I'll give a shout out to uh, Professor Anna Moore. We were down in Canberra with them uh, last month for our Space and uh, uh, space Earthlings, uh, Space Medicine for Earthlings event. Um, now, this is a, some of the projects involved EOS Space Systems, delivering advanced manufacturing technologies for the OzFuel instrument. Uh, are you, what, what's your insights into some of these? And, and are these continuing R&D projects or are these uh, significantly new projects? We, we kicked off uh, these projects uh, as, as new projects, although uh, one of them had actually been uh, some, some background work had already been done. The first one is all around intelligent uh, infrared hyperspectral technologies, and particularly the application of that is very much around bushfire resilience. Uh, it is, a, I think it's something like nearly $2 million, $1.2 million in cash, but also additional in kind. And as you've said, Chris, uh, the major collaborators in that is the ANU and uh, EOS Space Systems. Basically, what it'll do is it will uh, design, build and validate the, a, a base space telescope, an optical system, with an infrared uh, sensor package that will allow us to really be able to underpin some of the work that bushfire, uh, uh, the bushfire uh, um, technologies uh, are developed at the moment. And particularly the Oz fuel instrument that Marta, Professor Marta Yebra from the ANU is developing. So it is very, very exciting because it is actually Australian technology with Australian companies and ANU is one of our partners. We were very delighted, of course. And I don't really have to tell you what the benefit for all of us yeah. is when it is either predicting or supporting uh, bushfire management. Well, that might take us into the next project as well with Infinity Avionics. Um, 
That's a collaboration with University of New South Wales, Canberra, and nominal systems to develop capabilities in space-based uh, space surveillance. Uh, and I imagine that's a, that's working in AI and machine learning technologies as well. Uh, yeah. yeah, talk us through that one. It is absolutely, and in fact, um, it's all about space-based uh, space surveillance. Uh, a lot of the surveillance of debris, space debris, and satellites is actually done from the ground. This is a new technology that will allow us to have very fast uh, uh, cameras, high resolution cameras, and of course the tracking of those because satellites and space debris are actually moving at very, very high speeds to be able to actually uh, have a surveillance mechanism from on board the satellite. So that's what Infinity Avionics will be doing. Uh, and there are many, of course, defense as well as commercial Sp um, space operations applications for this, primarily, of course, as you know, the number of uh, the number of satellites, the number of objects in Leo, in particular, is increasingly exponentially, and therefore um, ensuring that traffic management or at least collision avoidance, uh, this is a a further step in automating the process of collision avoidance. Absolutely. I can see uh, a lot of commercial opportunities uh, in that one, if that if that gets off the ground, literally. Uh, and uh, there's um, Igor Dimitrovic uh, is the CEO there with Infinity. And I think I spoke to Igor uh, at the Australian Space Forum in, Can uh, in Adelaide uh, last year. Uh, and a couple of other appointments uh, with ANU, uh, Professor Hannah Kunawati, and uh, she's going to be the professional chair uh, of the system autonomy, intelligence, and decision making. And Professor Kurt McKenzie, uh, he'll be the professor, Professor Oriel, beg your pardon, chair of precision measurement in space. That's going to be so. Basically, a SmartSat CRC is is funding their their positions. Well, yes, we are. We are co-funding it. It's a partnership. We believe in strong partnerships and co-funding. We are co-funding both of those chairs with the. Australian National University. So we are we are very excited about that. They are the SmartSat professorial chairs. Uh, and Hannah, as you said, Kurniawati is a professorial chair for space system autonomy, intelligence, and decision making. She'll work very closely with our CRO, the Chief Research Officer, Dr. Carl Soibert, and all of the other professorial chairs and researchers in the Scarlet Lab, which is very much all dedicated to space autonomy, ensuring that, in fact, satellites become smarter. That is why we call uh, the SmartSat CRC SmartSat. Absolutely. And, of course, yeah. Professor Kirk McKenzie, an extraordinary individual working very closely with uh, NASA JPL, uh, has a very strong relationship with them, and, uh, and, and recently won a very large grant also from the Australian Space Agency on the Moon to Mars, Mars program. He will be the chair for precision measurement in space. We are, they, are delighted are, to have both of those on board. Absolutely. Are those appointments related to the projects as well? Is there a, alignment there? Uh, I know to say precision me measurement in space would uh, have some linkage to the Affinity project. There would be some, but I think their agenda is much, much broader. Uh, it's it. much broader in building capability. Uh, as I've said in the beginning, uh, Chris, uh, we really, the way that technology is moving really at lightning speed, we've got to make sure that Australia is not left behind. So we need to get professorial chairs to build capability so that with our investment, they kind of become force multipliers for R&D. It's, it's all about Australia being able to actually find that global distinctive difference in terms of technology, and that will enable then innovation and entrepreneurship to go global, not just only here in Australia. Uh, it, it's so important for Australia because, as we all know, its economic complexity index is very low. We are lagging behind. And therefore, we do need to work very hard to build capability in space and other sectors, of course, but build capability in space so that we can become a high tech nation in space. Well, and I think one, one, what we're trying to achieve with the Indo-Pacific Space and Earth Conference is that cross sector, as you say, in space uh, and what space is capable of uh, on Earth. 
uh, it really is uh, vital to us. And I, one thing I do like with these projects is particularly that space-based space surveillance. I think we really need, under, need to understand what we're already doing in space, uh, particularly that low Earth uh, orbit uh, domain as well. Um, Andy, looking forward to seeing you in Perth uh, in just a few weeks. Uh, you'll be running a, a panel and uh, we will be covering off on some of this on agriculture, forestry and fisheries, uh, that particular panel. Uh, and how they use space-related data. So really looking forward to that. Uh, and we'll have some more details uh, in the show notes as well, uh, including a link to this release. Absolutely, Chris. And I, I, have, to, I have to congratulate you um, on the work that you're doing with the Australia in Space magazine and Australia in Space TV. I think it's a great service because it communicates the successes of industry. Uh, one by one, brick by brick, we need to actually engage better and articulate better the value of space. And I think you and the conference, the Indo-Pacific Space Conference and other conferences are really the megaphones for us to do that. So we are very proud to be sponsoring uh, the conference and to be working with you. Wonderful. Thank you very much. And like, there's no shortage of content, which is a good thing. <laughs> so that's exactly. Thank goodness exactly. for that. It'd be that's hard uh, if there wasn't so much going on. And it's why uh, we keep so uh, interested and passionate. Andy Caronius, Professor there, uh, Chief Executive Officer and Managing Director in Adelaide there with the SmartSat CRC. Thank you very much again for joining us on Australia in Space TV. Thank you, Chris.